Who are the people we need to kick out of society? Let's find out, starting with... Number 7, Gucci Gang. Three bandits swiped nearly $58,000 worth of posh bags from a Manhattan Gucci store in broad daylight back in February of 2024. Surveillance footage showed the heist with one robber brandishing a firearm and others stuffing handbags into a sack like they're on a high-end shopping spree. One of the robbers tripped on something on the way out though, so they started out looking professional, but then they ended up looking like clowns. The trio, scampering down the busy sidewalk in the middle of the day, made their escape in a black Honda CRV, attempting to escape to New Jersey. Which is sad, since there's no criminals that live there. Only waste management professionals, right? Despite the FBI and NYPD both being hot on the trail, the thieves made a clean getaway and are possibly part of a larger crew pulling similar stunts elsewhere. The Gucci store ended up closing for the day, Another victim of a citywide trend in retail theft. A lot of people were shocked by the brazen nature of the crime, with one retail worker suggesting hiding merchandise from plain view to deter any future thefts. Meanwhile, residents, both old timers and newcomers, said they were getting sick of how often things like this were happening, questioning if enough is being done to combat the problem. If you've been at a store where these types of things are a growing problem, you'll know how annoying it is that everything is locked up. It takes twice as long to get laundry detergent at Target because someone with a key has to grab it. So, to the people we'd love to vote off the island just stealing things, if you could just stop that, that'd be great. Number six, unhinged mom. Lindsina Sutton, known for her impressive height of four feet, 10 inches, barged into her daughter's classroom at Lincoln Middle School in Syracuse with her own mom, Roxanne Tompkins, in tow. They were on a mission, not of mercy, but to settle a score. See, Sutton's daughter got into some trouble at school and muttered those infamous words that every teacher dreads. My mom will handle this after she got in trouble for ditching the previous day. Let's just say it didn't go well. Tompkins wasn't able to sneak in. She was stopped by security, but Sutton, with her hood up to blend in with the kids, not a stretch considering the, her height, found her way to the classroom. Once there, she decided to turn it into a boxing ring, treating the situation like she's going for a title bout. The teacher ended up with a concussion and a few facial injuries that were likely to have long-term consequences. And of course, this was all in front of the kids. Sutton's mom, Roxanne Tompkins, stepped in to explain the whole fiasco. According to her, it was all about bullying. Her granddaughter was apparently getting picked on at school and they were just trying to sort things out in a meeting. But the school was all like, your kid, she's the problem. Like it's her fault she's getting bullied. Tompkins swears they didn't flee the scene after the brawl, claiming security escorted them out. But Sutton was still arrested and charged. So now she's out on bond, awaiting her next court date, while the poor teacher's recovering. Roxanne did express a half-hearted sorry for what happened, for what it's worth. It's hard to tell who to believe on this one. The school says Sutton snuck in after her daughter got in trouble. Sutton says they were there for a meeting and she got mad that the school said her daughter was creating her own problems. Number five, the wedding scammer. Vincent Villafane, a wedding photographer from New Jersey, pulled off a real corker of a scam, swindling around $1 million from unsuspecting victims, including friends, family, and even his own father-in-law. The guy was like a modern day Robin Hood, if Robin Hood used his stolen loot to buy fancy cars, hit the casinos, and jet off to exotic locales. Which, thinking about it, it seems like that's probably exactly what Robin Hood would have done if those options were available to him. Anyway, Villafane convinced people to invest in graphics cards for gaming laptops, promising to flip them for double the investment. He told everyone about being hooked up with manufacturers overseas and how there was this global shortage of chips that made these cards as precious as gold bars, blah, blah, blah. Well, surprise, surprise, instead of investing in the graphics cards, Villafane was investing in his own luxury lifestyle. Audis, gambling sprees, vacations, this guy went for it. Someone handed over $16,000 one day, only for Villafane to drop a hefty chunk of that on an all-cash offer for a luxury Audi SUV. When victims started asking for their cash back, Villafane got creative with his excuses. He would say things like that the IRS froze his accounts, or he'd try to pass them with checks that bounced like rubber balls. Someone else even got fleeced out of a brutal 
$1,000. Villafane's ride hit the brakes when the NYPD Financial Crimes Unit and the Secret Service decided to crash his party. Now he's facing the music, charged with wire fraud and unlawful monetary transactions. If he's convicted, he could be looking at up to 30 years of room and board courtesy of the government. Karma's a funny thing, ain't it? Number four, exterior renovations. Libby Adamy and her daughter Alisa Gallas found themselves in a courtroom spotlight for a butt lift procedure gone horribly wrong. The duo faced charges for illegally injecting silicon into their client, wannabe adult film star Carissa Rajpal, leading to her tragic passing in 2019. Prosecutors said that Adami and Galaz ran an illegal surgery ring, luring in clients with cut rate prices for risky procedures. And this wasn't their first rodeo in the the risky business of back alley butt lifts either. A year before Rajpal's passing, they were caught on camera at another salon where a woman lost consciousness after a similar injection. Despite the risks, they kept at it for a decade, building a social media following and raking in cash. Rajpal's husband, Marco Giannuzzi, testified that his wife underwent the procedure three times, hiding the third one from him due to his objections. The duo performed the fatal injection during the third procedure, which was done in a hotel room, leaving Rajpal to lose consciousness after and have a heart attack while they fled the scene. Prosecutors talked about the dangers of silicone injections. The FTA has issued warnings against such procedures, cautioning people against buying fillers online or seeking treatment from unlicensed providers. Adami and Galaz weren't the only ones in serious trouble over illegal silicone injections. Vivian Alexandra Gomez faced similar charges after injecting silicone into a social media mob. The FDA's message is clear. When it comes to cosmetic procedures, safety should always come first. Or basically, you get what you pay for. And if you're having a risky procedure done, if it's anywhere other than a medical facility, you probably shouldn't do it. And by probably, we mean definitely don't do it. At the time of this video, the case is still ongoing. Number three, entitlement issues? Lacey Percival got a front row seat to a mini drama when her DoorDash driver, known only as Corey, threw a tantrum over a $5 tip on a $20 order. Percival caught the whole awkward exchange on TikTok, showing Corey grumbling about her nice house as he stormed off with an F and a U. There were other letters in between. Classy, right? Apparently, Corey wasn't feeling the love for the 25% tip Percival left him. But seriously, buddy, did you expect a gold-plated handshake for delivering a pizza? Internet Internet sleuths were quick to jump in, with some suggesting Corey needed a lesson in manners and basic math. Others joked that he must have mistaken the tip for a down payment on the house. Percival considered reporting Corey to DoorDash, but she couldn't because of some glitch in the app. She shrugged it off, wishing Corey wisdom in spending his hard-earned fiver. As for DoorDash, they stayed silent on the whole debacle. Maybe they were busy delivering pizzas with a side of manners training. What do you think of this situation on tipping and tipping culture in general in the US? Tell us in the comments below. Number two, trust him, he's not crooked. Rasib Ghaffar, a judge from the UK, got together with a bunch of lawyers who cooked up a 1.8 million pound legal aid scam fleecing taxpayers left and right. Ghaffar's slice of the pie? Over 140,000 pounds for a case involving some Indian restaurants and their sketchy employment practices. The proceeding over the case wasn't pulling any punches either, slamming Ghaffar for his outrageous attempt to pocket public funds through deceit and forged documents all in the name of greed. Gaffar's response? He insisted he wasn't greedy, saying he was never taught greed and that he would never be greedy. Prosecutors laid out the whole con detailing how Gaffar and his cronies cooked up fake claims for work they never did. Gaffar even had the nerve to slap a 184,000 pound price tag on 350 hours of supposed legal work. Spoiler alert, he wasn't even in court for most of it. Meanwhile, Gaffar's partners in crime weren't exactly choir boys either. Azar Khan, Ghazi Khan, and Joseph Ameyu Kirameh tried to milk nearly 9 million pounds from the legal aid system for 
trials that never even happened. Ghazi Khan, one of the ringleaders, got slapped with a five-year sentence, while Azar Khan and Amiyu Karima managed to dodge jail time with suspended sentences. Kafar's wife, Karina Maciel, also a solicitor, dodged trial due to medical issues, adding another twist to this legal soap opera. It's weird to hear about a judge scamming people. It's not like they're hurting for money or prestige. They're even known for being comparatively sober. And Gafar insisting he's not greedy is as hilarious as it's delusional. Why else are you scamming for more money when you're already wealthy, if not greed? He sounds like one of those people who are never wrong and never do anything wrong. He's probably a joy to be around. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to stay for our past release to find out how Kevin Hart's personal assistant completely ripped him off. Number one, a relationship in the dumpster. Sierra Simone Booker's 30th birthday bash took a sour turn when an argument with her boyfriend, Kristen Allen, led to her throwing his belongings into a dumpster in Nashville. Kristen, seeking help, called the cops to retrieve his lost possessions, including his iPhone, wallet, medication, and work clothes. Upon arrival, officers found Sierra admitting to tossing everything out, leaving Tristan with nothing but dumpster diving hopes. As a result, Sierra faced a vandalism charge and found herself locked up in the Metro Nashville jail on January 12th. Now, she's out on a $2,500 bond, learning the hard lesson that birthday drama can land you in more trouble than just a hangover. But hey, at least she got a memorable birthday story out of it, right? Do you have any crazy stories about getting in fights with your ex? Did you ever throw their stuff in the dumpster, set it on fire, and then dance around it laughing like a crazy person? We haven't either. She wanted to help her expat friends in Dubai by helping them send money to their foreign bank accounts. But instead, she just kept the money. But she probably isn't the worst person to find to help you. That person may just be Gilbert Arena's assistant who stole close to $7 million from him. The same thing happened to Kevin Hart. His personal assistant stole close to a million bucks from him. Number four, no laughing matter. Crime can happen to anyone. And that's what happened to Kevin Hart. From 2017 to 2019, Kevin Hart was defrauded out of nearly $1 million in unauthorized credit card charges. Crime can happen to anyone. And that's what happened to Kevin Hart. From 2017 to 2019, Kevin Hart was defrauded out of nearly $1 million in unauthorized credit card charges. The scammer was none other than Hart's personal shopper, Dylan Jason Sire, who is trusted with Hart's personal credit card to make purchases. Sire, a Long Island native, owned a personal shopper business in which he charged the actor's credit card with legitimate purchases, but the things he bought weren't always what Hart had in mind. Sire spent about $923,000 of Hart's money and an additional $240,000 on jewelry and watches from a luxury jeweler in California. He spent thousands on fine art and other collective items, including five Patek Philippe watches worth more than $400,000. He bought a Sam Friedman painting, 16 bare brick collector dolls, five cause collectible dolls, and two Louis Vuitton bags. He showed off many of these purchases on his personal Instagram page. Sire and Hart met in 2015 through his personal shopping business, Sire Consulting, LLC. He was hired to make several purchases for the actor and was given his personal credit card under the assumption that he would only make authorized purchases. By the time Hart uncovered the year and a half long scam, he was out more than $1 million. The cops kicked in his door to serve a search warrant in February 2021. They recovered about $250,000 worth of cash and goods. Sire was arraigned and charged with a laundry list of fraud and theft charges and potentially faces up to 25 years in prison. The Queens County District Attorney warned that no one, not even celebrities like Kevin Hart, are immune to scams. Number three, almost a Hilton. Renata Shamrakova, the personal assistant to Nikki Hilton's ex-husband, spent nearly $1.6 million of his money on elite Amex, on shopping sprees and exotic vacations. 
She conned Todd Meister while she worked for him at his Upper East Side townhouse in Manhattan. Neighbors started noticing piles of packages showing up at Renata's door. They were later discovered to contain high-end jewelry with expensive rings, necklaces, and bracelets. She also used his credit card to purchase airline tickets and fund her travel abroad. She covered her tracks by paying off the $800,000 credit card bill using Meister's J.P. Morgan checking account and transferring the funds to American Express. At the heart of the story, we have have Nikki Hilton, Todd Meister, and of course, Renata Shamrakova. Nikki Hilton is an American businesswoman, socialite, model, and fashion designer. But she's probably most known for being Paris Hilton's younger sister and fellow heir to the Hilton family fortune. Born into the wealthy Hilton family, she continued her streak of inherited wealth by marrying into the Rothschild family through James Rothschild in 2015. Paris was Nikki's maid of honor, and they honeymooned in Botswana after the wedding. Before that, Nikki married Todd Meister. He was a football star at the uppity Riverdale Country School before going on to Harvard to get a degree in business. Then, Todd started a company in the mid-90s dedicated to investing in internet startups. He sold the company in 2000 and started working as a hedge fund manager while still finding time to party. Meister was Nikki's longtime friend before they started dating on and off in 2003. Nikki was just a kid when she married Meister, but he treated her like gold and they had great chemistry. Her parents were thrilled about the wedding. The ceremony was held in in August 2004 at a Las Vegas wedding chapel. Nikki wore an aqua blue silk dress and Meister donned a button-down shirt and pants. Paris witnessed the vows along with Bijou Phillips and comedian Jeff Beecher. But not everyone was convinced it would last. Meister's friends guessed it was a publicity stunt that would get annulled three days later. Unfortunately for the couple, he wasn't so far from the truth. The marriage was annulled three months later with the couple saying they got married on a whim. According to friends of the couple, they tried to give their marriage a fair shot, but it just wasn't meant to be. But while he was distracted being the newest member of the Hilton family, his personal assistant was stealing his Amex. Renata used his banking information to apply for an American Express credit card in his name and then added herself as a secondary user. In April 2011, the Ukrainian woman got too comfortable with her new boss and went on a wild spending spree. She sent the items to her apartment in Chelsea on 21st Street. Many of the purchases included pricey jewelry and exotic vacations. By the time her swindling days were over, she had stolen nearly $1 million from Meister. Unfortunately, Meister didn't notice the stolen funds for 10 months. He notified police in January 2012, and Renata was arrested four days later. She was charged with grand larceny, criminal possession of stolen property, identity theft, and forgery, and held on Rikers Island for a $100,000 bond. Her parents even tried to sell their home to help their daughter avoid jail. Renata also started a social media campaign to pay back the money she owed to Meister, but it was less than successful, raising a grand total of $335. She took the stand at the Manhattan Supreme Court in December 2013, where she pleaded guilty to felony grand larceny. She was sentenced up to three years behind bars. The defense team requested that she stay at Rikers Island, but the judge denied this motion and sent her to a prison in upstate New York. Number two, play money. Ex-NBA star Gilbert Arenas found out, out of the blue, that his trusted personal assistant, John A. White, scammed him out of roughly $7 million in Arenas' estimation. However, on court docs, Arenas could only prove around $2.1 million. Arenas only found out when he started noticing discrepancies in one of his bank accounts where he would have what he called a play money bank account. White had given himself unauthorized access to this specific play money bank account that Arenas used basically as a petty cash account. Whenever Gilbert needed, for example, $20,000 for a weekend trip to Miami, Arenas would have White call up Arenas' money manager and have him transfer the money to Gilbert's play money bank account. Then the money would be in there for Arenas to use. But White went on and abused this power by telling Arenas' money manager that Arenas would need money for a made-up purchase. And as soon as that money would touch the play money account, White would transfer that money into his own bank account. So Arenas would never see the discrepancy in the balance. And the money manager would never follow up with Arenas since White was his personal assistant. At the height of Arenas' career, Arenas' assistant was stealing millions of dollars by transferring money from Arenas' bank account into his own. He spent the money on a home in Florida, a Ferrari, and a Range Rover. White was found guilty and sentenced to 57 months in federal prison and two years of supervised release. The judge banned him from opening or using any credit cards without his probation officer's permission. White asked for a retrial when new evidence emerged 
charge that could change his guilty conviction. Many witnesses came forward with statements that Arenas was aware of the big transactions White was making on his behalf. White also found signed forms from the bank showing that Arenas was fully aware of these transactions. People close to Arenas came forward to say that the NBA star was known to spend carelessly like when he bought a home for one of his girlfriends in Florida. The scammer accused Arenas of lying when he said White wasn't authorized to make these big purchases. Then there are Arenas's Instagram posts that seem to brag about defrauding American Express by not paying his tab at a gentleman's club. Still, the judge wasn't convinced. He rejected White's request for a retrial, saying this new evidence didn't suggest innocence and wasn't relevant to the criminal case. Number 1. Forex Fun Katie Blameyer moved to the United Arab Emirates in 2011 to start working as a physical education teacher at an international school where she taught a British curriculum. She was born and raised in Lancashire, England, but moved after her mother died in 2008. When her five-year contract ended at the international school in UAE, Blameyer started doing private swimming lessons for the children of wealthy locals in their personal pools. Then, she got a Facebook message that invited her into a life of crime. Someone asked her if she was looking for work, hoping she would be able to swap their Emirati dirhams for another currency at a better rate than what the banks offer. At first, it didn't seem to be a problem. Blay Meyer, a staple in the Dubai party scene, did these currency exchanges for a while. A driver picked up the sender's money and brought it to Blay Meyer. Then she'd exchange it for cash in her British bank account. She offered reasonable rates and there weren't any problems until things snowballed and went totally wrong. During the pandemic, she saw the opportunity to rip off many expats, especially Emirates airline crew members and pilots who had been laid off and were desperate for better exchange rates. She used fake names like Emogen Smith and Don Smith to lure them in. Her clients thought she was genuine until they realized their money wasn't being returned. One businessman, Mr. Osman, said he lost 42,000 pounds to Blameyer after using her services to expand his kebab business. She told him she was pregnant and wanted to get rid of her dram so she could return to her husband in the UK, a win-win for them both. But then she disappeared. Osman spent two stressful, sleepless weeks trying to get in touch with her. When he confided in some friends, they told him that Blameyer had a reputation for scams. An Australian air hostess lost 6,500 pounds after trying to send money back home to put a deposit it down on a house. A Spanish pilot said he lost 22,000 pounds trying to send money home to pay for his father's funeral. He saw Blay Meyer's post in an airline Facebook group and assumed she worked in the industry. He trusted her. The deal was supposed to save him 250 pounds in bank fees, but the money never arrived in his account in Madrid. Blay Meyer met his wife and kids and was friendly to the whole family. The pilot never knew she was capable of such heartlessness. She also scammed a British pilot out of 50,000 pounds, a Belgian cabin crew member out of 20,000 pounds and a French airline worker out of 18,000 pounds. WhatsApp messages show the dozens of excuses she used to explain why the victims never received their money. A Dubai resident sent her 28,000 pounds as an investor to develop a food ordering app. Blay Meyer spent 2,000 pounds on software development but never developed the app. The investors never saw his money. When victims tried to get their money back, Blay Meyer threatened them. She wasn't allowed to leave Lancashire until she paid back the debts owed to her swimming class business partner Alex Campbell who took her to court after he invested 15,000 pounds in her company, Float UAE, in exchange for a job. When Campbell tried to cash a security check for his investment, it bounced. At least 20 people filed complaints to the police, and Blaymeyer was arrested and jailed on Christmas Eve 2019. After a civil court case, a travel ban was placed, preventing Blaymeyer from leaving Dubai. The court instated a repayment plan and put her on the no-fly list. She was released from jail after repaying the debt that caused a previous check to bounce. Meanwhile, she blamed multiple people up the chain of command for all the money that had mysteriously vanished and denied that she was operating a scam. She said she used 100,000 pounds of her personal savings to repay some victims, leaving eight victims who owed a total of 80,000 pounds. According to Blameyer, she's the real victim here, saying she's been blackmailed and received death threats. Sometimes she even blamed the bank for the mix-ups that caused her to serve jail time. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section what you'd rather have. Twice your pay now and work 60 hours a week, or half your pay now, but work 10 hours a week.